Solving a system of two linear equations in two variables, in this case x and y, using substitution. So another way to solve a system of equations, equations that consist of lines that have two variables. So we can use the fact that we want both the y's and the x's to equal each other in our coordinate system when we have two different lines. So let's look at the simplest case here. We have y is equal to 3. And we also have y is equal to x. Both of these are lines. This is a horizontal line that goes along at 3. And this right here is a line where y is always equal to x. Whatever x is, y is the same thing. Well, now we want to find out when these two things are equal. We can actually substitute in our value from the first equation into the second equation because we want the y's to be equal. So y equals 3 right here, and y also has to equal x. Both these things have to be true. So if we want to solve for x, we can just take this y and replace it with what y has to equal up here. So instead of a y, I'm going to put a 3. 3 equals x. And since y is always equal to x, y is also equal to 3. So 3 comma 3. Now let's look at a little bit more complicated situation. So let's say we have two equations. One of them is y equals 2x plus 3. The other is y equals negative x minus 3. Now we're going to use substitution. We want the y's to be equal to each other because that's the way they cross. The, the y coordinate has to be equal for both of those, those equations in order for them to have the same solution. So we have y is equal to this. We also have y is equal to this. We can take the y from this equation, 2x plus 3, y is equal to that, and we can replace it with the y in this equation. Remember, we want our y's to be equal so we can find a point that works for both of them. So instead of y in my second equation right here, I'm going to replace it with what y is equal to in my first equation. So I'm going to take this and replace it with y, because I know y has to be equal to both of those things. So now I have, instead of y, I have 2x plus 3. Now what this does is it gives me an equation with just one variable. And we know how to solve equations with one variable. So we're going to add x to both sides here so we can get our x's all together. And we have 3x plus 3 is equal to, since we added the x to this side, that cancels and that is a negative 3. Solving for x, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, and we have 3x is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by 3, and we have our x coordinate. x is equal to negative 2. That's our first coordinate. We can go ahead and put that on here. x is equal to negative 2. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out what that y coordinate is. So we're going to take this x and we can actually substitute it into either one of these equations in order to find out what y is. Because x has to be the same for both of these. If x matches, your y coordinate is going to match as well. So we're going to take that negative 2. And I chose the first equation right here. So instead of x, I'm going to put in a negative 2. So I have y equals 2x plus 3. y equals 2 times negative 2. I want x to equal negative 2. And I'm trying to figure out what y is plus a 3. We're going to do that multiplication, and I have y equals negative 4 plus 3, which y equals negative 1. Now I have my y coordinate. Now just as a double check, you can go ahead and plug it into the other equation, and this should make the equation true there as well. We know it makes this true. We actually use that to figure out our y. Well, we can plug it into this equation as well. So let's go ahead and check that. We're going to, instead of y, we're going to put our negative 1. And instead of x right here, we're going to put the negative 2. So y equals negative x minus 3. For our y, we replace it with a negative 1. For our x, we replace it with a negative 2. That's our coordinate point right there. And we're just going to check to make sure both these sides are equal and that that's a solution. So negative 1 equals a negative negative 2, which is going to give us a 2, minus a 3. So 2 minus subtract 3 is going to give us a negative 1. And that is equal to negative 1. So there we have a check. Let's look at another example. So we have y minus 2x equals negative 3. And we have y equals 3x plus 1. 
Now notice both of them don't have the y equals. In this case, I'm going to use this one to substitute into this equation because it's already solved for y. We know what one y equals and we can just substitute it in over in this equation. So instead of y up here, I'm going to replace it with my other equation right here. I'm going to replace it with what y equals in this equation. Since we want those y's to be equal when we're finding a solution. So instead of y, I'm going to replace it with 3x minus 1. Subtract 2x equals negative 3. Now I have an equation with one variable again. I'm going to go ahead and get my x's together, combining like terms. 3x minus 2x is going to give me a positive x. That's a 1x. And then minus 1 equals negative 3. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And I have x is equal to negative 2. So that is my x coordinate. Now I need to find my y coordinate. This is the coordinate where both of those graphs cross where they're equal to each other. And to do that, I can choose either one of these equations to substitute my x equals negative 2 in. I'm going to choose this one since it's already solved for y, but you could choose either one. And I'm going to replace the x in this equation with negative 2 to figure out my y. So I have y equals 3 times negative 2 minus 1. 3 times negative 2 is going to give me a negative 6. y equals negative 6 minus 1. y equals negative 7. So now I have my y coordinate. And I can go ahead and just do a double check on here just to make sure that this solution also belongs to this one right here. So I'm going to plug in for a y, I'm going to plug in my y coordinate. For the x, I'm going to substitute in my x coordinate and make sure that equation is true or each side is equal to each other. So I have negative 7 minus 2 times a negative 2 equals negative 3. Negative 7, we're going to go ahead and do that multiplication. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 7 plus 4 is equal to negative 3. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3 over here. And negative 3 on this side. And I find that those are equal. So the coordinate point negative 2 comma negative 7 is where those two graphs cross is a solution to both of those equations. Let's look at two more equations. Y equals negative 2x plus 4 and y equals, or y plus 2x equals 7. Now again, this one is not solved for y. And so I'm going to use this one to take and substitute into this equation. So instead of a y right here, I'm going to replace it with what my other equation says y is. I want those y's to be equal. That's what I'm trying to find. So instead of y right here, I'm going to take this negative 2x plus 4 and I'm going to substitute it in because y is equal to that. So I have negative 2x plus 4, that's my y, plus 2x, that stays the same, equals 7. Now I have an equation in one variable, and I can solve. Negative 2x plus 2x, that's combining like terms, I get a 0x, or just a 0, plus 4 equals 7. So that looks kind of weird to me, but I go ahead and do the math, and I get 4 equals 7. That is never true, not at least in this universe, and so there is no solution to this. Now when we were graphing, we saw that no solution meant parallel lines, so I can actually use that as a check. So I'm going to plot two points from each of these equations and go ahead and graph the line just to double check. So this first equation, I'm going to choose a 0 for x. Negative 2 times 0 is 0 plus 4, that gives me a 4. And then I'm going to choose a 2 for, for x here, so negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 4 gives me a 0. I plot those two points, I graph the line, and I do the same thing with this equation. Choosing a 0 for x, I find that y equals 7. Choosing a 3 for x, 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract a 6 from both sides, and I get y is equal to 1. I graph those two points, I draw the line, and I find out that they indu indeed do look parallel. So there's no solution to the system e equations. There's no place where a coordinate point works for both of them. And our last example y equals 3x plus 1, 3y minus 9x equals 3. So again, we have one, one equation where it's solved for y, the other one it is not. We're going to use this one to substitute into this equation right here. So instead of a y right here, I'm going to put what y is from my first equation. So I have a 3 times y, so I'm going to have that 3. I'm going to put the parentheses because it's times the whole thing. And this is my y that I'm substituting in. So 3 times 3x plus 1 minus 9x equals 3. 
Now I can go ahead and distribute my 3 to everything in my parentheses, and I have a 9x plus 3 minus 9x equals 3. Go ahead and combine like terms. I have a positive 9x and a negative 9x. That gives me a 0x or just a 0. And I have a 3 here and a 3 over here, subtracting a 3 from both sides. And I get 0 equals 0. Well, at least we know that that is true. That's always true, in fact. No matter what number we choose for x, this is always going to be true. So it has infinitely many solutions. It can be any x, and this will always be true. So when we go ahead and double check and we graph it, we're going to graph the first equation by just choosing two points, a 0 for x and a 1 for y. We plug in a 0, 3 times 0 plus 1 is going to give us a 1 for y. Plug in a 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 gives me a 7, and I have two coordinate points. I go ahead and graph them. Do the same thing with this equation, 0 in for x. That gives me 3y minus 0 equals 3. Divide both sides by 3. I get a 1. Look, it matches right there. And then I'm going to try a 2. If I try a 2 in here, I have 3y minus 9 times 2. Minus 9 times 2 is negative 18, and that equals a 3. And then I'm going to add 18 to both sides. I get a 3y equals 21, dividing by 3, and I get a 7. So notice my two coordinate points. The only way this can ever happen, where they can have multiple places where they intersect, is if it is the same line. When we graph this, we can see that it's the same line. It has infinitely many solutions.